Uh, my name is uh, Chief Trisha Spence of Ottawa, Biscuit, Ontario. My name is uh, Elder uh, Raymond Robinson from Cross Lake First Nation Creek Territory, Manitoba. So we're here uh, tonight just to explain what we're doing and why we're doing this. And um, I'll start with, uh, I'll start. Um, I know it's hard for Canadian citizens to understand what's happening and then and why we're doing this. And, um, and, it's, and it's because of the media. Uh, the media has been confusing all Canadian citizens why this movement is happening for the idle more and why we're doing hunger strike. It's, it's about our treaty rights and our relationship with the treaty with the government. We're, we're here you know, to um, protect our rights especially in, uh, you know, the treaty was uh, signed by our grandfathers and your grandfathers. And that treaty was about, you know, to nation to nation, to have a, a relationship and to share the land and to honor and respect each other. You know, you're part of the treaty, I'm part of the treaty, your children are part of the treaty, my children are part of your, the treaty. And it's time for the government to honor this treaty. And I know it's hard, you know, for Canadian citizens to understand about a uh, treaty relationship, but once you <coughs> learn the history and discover what's happening, you'll be surprised how the government is being um, violating the treaty and the treaty relationship. And, um, you know, it's, it's been so many years this relationship is being destroyed, especially the treaty relationship. The government, in the past, even to this day, is being um, abusing First Nations in every way. That you will, you will, like you know, will be hard to believe until you see it with your own eyes. And we're telling the truth. Like I know the Canadian citizens that we were complaining, but we're not complaining. We're raising our voice. What's happening with the government in the treaty relationship with First Nations? And how and how he's been, um, you know, using the system to take control of our lives and abusing us. You know, there's yes, we get free services for um, education and health services, but we have the poorest services in our in our communities. For example, education. We had the poor quality of education. There was a big movement that was done by Shannon Kastajan. It's called Shannon's Dream. You know, once you understand the purpose of it, you would really, really uh, honor the, the, the school that started that. And our health system, it's killing our people. It is, like, in our remote areas, there's no doctors, only nurses. But the nurses do their best, but they don't have the qualifications to be the doctors. And uh, even the dentists, they don't even come to our communities maybe every two, three months. You know, like, and for <coughs> infrastructure, we don't even have a, a infrastructure in place to build more housing, better facilities for our offices. For housing, it's a crisis in each community. There's people living overcrowding housing, and it leads to health impact, social impact. These are the things that you need to see in our community, and the government knows about these issues that we have been addressed in so many years. Even Sheila Fraser, the audit auditor for the government, made these recommendations for so many years for immediate actions such as <coughs> infrastructure, clean water, better health system, better education system, better child welfare system. But they've been ignoring these recommendations. So this is why we're, we're speaking up. All we want is justice. <coughs> Fairness and equal opportunities is like Canadian citizens. So I'm going to take a break and I'll let Raymond say something and then I'll say something again. In order to really understand uh, and conceive whether it is that uh, Chief uh, Theresa Spence is alluding to with respect to the treaty relationship between the Crown and the First Nations, you have to go a little bit uh, deeper into the historical side of it. You see, <clears throat> when treaties were formed, they were formed on a nation-to-nation -nation basis, government-to-government, government. 
sovereign nation to a sovereign nation. One people to the other people. One country to the other country. This is how the treaties were formulated. And within the treaty came about this Royal Proclamation of 1763, where it states that there were certain sections of land that settlers were allotted to. And there was, a lot of, and there was also a certain sections of land allotted to the First Nations, lands reserved for the use and the benefit of the, na of the nations, First Nations. And they were supposed to remain undisturbed and molested through time immemorial, as long as the grass grows, the river froze, and the sun shines. Now, when King George signed the Royal Proc, he recognized every single aspect of who we were, our governance structure, our language, our sovereignty, everything that we were, he recognized. Mm -hmm. Now, as time went by, Canada patriated itself. And within that patriation, Canada was allowed to start what she called a third level of government with the uh, instructions that they need to form treaty relations with the First Nations of Canada. They did everything else except honor the treaty relations we have with the, with the Crown, at the same time start formulating treaty relations with us as well. That's the part that we are crying to and what is uh, Chief Spence alluding, alluding to. Now, you, you got to realize that all we have been crying for, what all we've been trying to do since day one in our fast is to try to reestablish this relationship with the Crown and the First Nation on a nation-to-nation -nation basis as it was back then. <clears throat> back then, when the treaties were being negotiated with, they smoked a pipe. And this pipe represents a symbolic uh, gesture that being handed down from generation to generation, generation to generation of what the way treaties were supposed to be. You got the stem and you got that rock part there, the pipe part, 50-50. This is what we're looking for, is that 50-50 relationship to be reestablished, to be honored and to be respected. We are not calling out for anything more than that. Now, there's some stuff that the Chief Spence have alluded to with respect to the way uh, the government has been treating us. I'll take mine, for example. I'll use the uh, funding formula. Mm. We get, we get uh, uh, the government uses what she call a per capita basis formula with respect to how we get money, how much you're gonna get money. So every, every single child that's born and registered in a band list, we get a certain amount of money. So <clears throat> right now, uh, the government is using what she call a 3,000 population formula. And this, this uh, funding was capped and stopped back in 1982. So up to the 2013 now, we are now beyond 8,000 population in Cross Lake. Now we have to try to carry the extra 5,000 people with the 3,000 uh, people uh, per capita formula that uh, the government is still exercising to this day. And we, don't, we just do not have enough money to serve the basic needs that uh, Chief Spence was alluding to. The infrastructure, the housing, the education, the social economic development, the crowded housing, health. And this is what the government of Canada is not telling. Now he wants us to be accountable uh, with respect to our finances. But what about him? Has he been accountable? Has he been transparent with the way he, he's been treating us as First Nations people? No, he's not. From day one, we've been asking for that. But to this day, we're still not getting it in any shape and form. And that's just such that's so wrong. Instead of um, respecting the operational uh, ground treaty relationship we have, he is, he went he went down and uh, exercised the bill C38, which gives 
arbitrary powers to, to the ministers to do as they wish with respect to everything, every aspect of our lives. Now, beyond that, you have to fill C45, which takes control all our resources, our lands and waters. And on top of that, he's going to exercise another bill, matrimonial property rights, which will ensure that we don't have nothing whatsoever. Now, instead of progressing to establish a treaty relationship with us, he's taking everything that we have as First Nation Crown relations that, that, Crown relations that we had. Now, having said that, it, this is not just becoming a First Nation issue. It's, it's now a, a Canadian issue because democracy and the freedom of rights are being violated. We have a constitutional protection, freedom of expression, um, freedom to voice our opinions, but those have all been taken away <laughs> from this Bill C-38, which, which gives all the powers to the, the, um, the ministers, where it states that we have to trust the government now and not question what they do. This is not just a First Nation issue. This is a, this is a, a violation of our co a basic constitutional rights as entrenched in the Constitution ca uh, Act of, of Canada. And that's basically where I come from and I'll give back the... Uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's true what Raymond said about uh, our, con our contribution funding from the government. You know, it's very discrimination the way they um, formulate our, uh, our funding. It's calculated by the population of uh, reserve, and it's not calculated by the high costs, like the way in our reserve. Like, it's, it's really discriminating. And yes, they, they say that we mismanage, but we don't. We do our best to, uh, you know, to augmentate our people meets, and there are times that we don't even have enough. Example, there's projects. Uh, like housing projects or school projects or water projects, whatever that we need to improve, we always face challenges of shortfall of the funding because you know they don't calculate the the high cost of shipping the material and the we we order the materials from out of town. It, we don't we don't have the materials in uh, in our community, and we have to hire lawyers. We have to hire consultants. So all the money that comes to us, it goes back to uh, how our reserve. That, that means we are providing e economic to our reserve uh, members. So this is where they don't tell you things like that. Like we're always shortfall on things and this is where we get penalized when we have to use the funding. You know, like it's, it be, it, this government is really getting aggressive on cutbacks. And, uh, you know, when we see that, you know, we know that our crisis is going to get worse. And it's important for both level governments to work with us, not just one. That's what, what we work with, the federal government. He cannot meet our needs no more. So this is why we urge this uh, meeting, meeting, to meet, uh, meeting with the nations to nations, the leaders of the governments and the prime minister. It is time to sit on a table and plan the future, uh, to plan the future together because it's going to impact <coughs> Canadian citizens and First Nations. So it's important. You know, to plan together, not to compete with each other, even the government. You need to stop uh, fighting with each other and sit down, okay, let's do this together. That's what that treaty is about, it's, you know, doing things together. And end of the day, it's going to impact all of us. For example, the <coughs> environment, you know, like the Mother Earth is getting destroyed each second as we wait and wait for these mining companies destroying our, the land. You know, without the water, without the plants, without the medicine, without the air, where are we going to be in within five years' time? So we, we really, we, you know, Canadian citizens and, and First Nations, they have to do this together. If not, then we we're, not, we're not going to have no place to live in. And it's important for the First Nations to be part of the government. You know, this is why things are not working, because the Prime Minister only look at one, one level as the National Chief, but he has to understand his role. You know, the National Chief's role is a spokesperson, but the Chiefs are the ones and responsible for their people. It's their responsibility to have plans for their, their, their communities and their, their youth and the, you know, the elders, not the government. Because our, our ancestors welcome your ancestors to our country with, you know, with welcome hands, with no conditions. And they let them alone and let them be and live their, with their life in peacefully. But somehow the government 
wanted, uh, well, took everything away from us. You know, our language, our culture practice, our justice, our education, our even our own life. One good example is the resident school. You know, the government promised our parents they would look after us and educate us. But instead, they abused us, they molested us, and they, uh, they even killed young women who were pregnant, never seen the babies. You know, that's the darkest history. They even put us in electric chairs and shock us up, whatever. <coughs> you know, and some kids were there since they were four years old until they were 18. You know, this kind of act is really a criminal act to me. And they apologize for it. Now, they won't, they won't even meet with us. We have every right to call this meeting because we want to protect our rights in our treaty relationship and our treaty rights and start it fresh. And if they don't want to do this process of meeting. Maybe it's time for a court to take them. I don't know. Maybe I don't want to make more movement until that meeting will take place because that meeting is very critical because right now as we speak, there's crisis out there even in, Can in Canadian citizens in First Nations. It's just not about us no more. <coughs> so. You know, um, there have been court challenges over the course of years. And the courts, the highest court of Canada, Supreme Court of Canada, has favored many of our of our causes. Where there's over 170 cases out there that states in law that we have title possession to these lands. They're 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 there, and yet the government of Canada does not recognize those decisions handed down by the Supreme Court of Canada. There's a case, a Sparrow case, it's called, where the government of uh, the Supreme Court of Canada uh, made a decision that anything that's going to affect First Nations, they have to be consulted with and informed before anything is done that's going to affect their lives forever. Now, what they did with these bills, they never consulted or informed any, they didn't inform me, they didn't inform her, certainly, and they didn't inform our leaders, per se, nothing. And this is a violation in every aspect. I thought nobody was supposed to be above the law. Mm. Is Harper above the law? Is she immune to the law, the legal system? He wants all the Canadian, Canadian citizens to be penalized every time they break the law. They go to jail. But what about him, what he's doing right now? He's violating all the con constitutional laws that were handed down by the Supreme Court of Canada, where it states that we have legal title to these lands. Now, it does not recognize these, including the Sparrow case. Now, that's criminal to me. That's criminal. And, and it's not right. I'm also one of the um, Indian resident, residential school survivor students. I went to three residential schools. I've been abused on all levels. Whatever is in your heart, whatever you think abuses, I went through it. I even cut my own brother down in one of these institutions. He was hanging. That never, that, that's always is in my head. And the atrocities that were done to us behind the confines of those, I don't want anybody to ever go through those. There's even a story back in BC where the two children were taken to the hospital and one of them didn't want to quiet down. They injected, they injected some kind of a needle into him and he died right there. And the other one that was still crying, they put him in a black hole for about seven or eight days until he shut up. These are some of the things that the Canadian government does not tell society of all the human rights violations he does to our, us First Nations here of Canada. All the things he tries to look good out there in France, in Germany, England as a champion of human rights. But if you really look at the historical aspect of human rights violations across the world, North America is number one in human in human rights violation and those human rights violations is honest First Nations people. 
And that's the truth. <laughs> right now, uh, the Prime Minister <clears throat> is denying our rights for this meeting. It is our rights because we want to protect our rights in our tree right now because it's been violated so many years. And I don't understand why the government and the Governor General are so afraid to meet with us. We're no threat. We're no threat. How are we going to bring our, our pipe and for them to bring their Bible and sit down and talk? You know, like the way the Prime Minister is, he's selling everything, our resources. He's selling to other countries. You know, he has that attitude, it's my way or no way. He doesn't want to listen to anybody, not even the Canadian citizens. You know, like if you're going to start selling everything to a to other country, what are we going to be left with? Nothing. Are we going to, are all Canadian citizens going to live in a third world conditions like us? This is what's going to happen if he keeps us up. So for the, the Prime Minister, all we're asking is for a meeting. Also, I don't want to meet with you personally, not even Ray wants mm -hmm. to meet you, but you need to meet our, our leaders. You, you need to respect our leaders like the way we respect you as a Prime Minister all these years. It's a simple request. And I don't see why you're making it so complicated. You know, as a leader, you're there to protect the women and children, not to, not, not to make them suffer like, we, like you're doing to us as First Nations. You're, you're making us suffer. We share the land. We share the, you know, our expertise with you. We shared everything with, 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 the, with the government. Now it's time to renew that relationship and really sit down and talk to us. And, um, and for the you know, Canadian citizens, we know Canadian citizens are there with us. They want to walk with us. It's just the government level that, that they want to walk with us. And it's important for Canadian citizens that we understand that you don't really know what's going on, but once you know the truth, it will really change your heart towards us. We respect your culture ways, we learn your culture ways, and we're just asking the same thing from First Nations to honor and respect us the way we did for past hundred years. And it's, you know, for the First Nations leadership, it's time to work together. It's time not, not to be afraid no more. It's time to show our youth and our women children that you're there for them, not to be afraid of the government no more. End of the day, we have to stand together. You know, there was a time there was a war. Our ancestors and our First Nation ancestors went together and saved our country. And now we have that same heart. Why can't we do that again? Just walk together the way it was in the past. We need to protect the country right now because the way it is, the relationship is being destroyed by this government, Harper's government, I'll call it. But, you know, he still has that opportunity with us and with our leaders. That's all we're asking for is we want our freedom. We want our ways back the way it was before because we give that to you. It's time to give that to us. As a final note, I, I, I'll say this. <coughs> It's good that the Canadian society as a whole rose up because this uh, Bill C-45 and all these bills that are being passed by the government affects every individual there is in this Canadian soil, uh, what we call Turtle Island. And I encourage everybody to voice their opinion, to voice their concern, and not let the Harper government or any other government uh, violate their basic rights, their basic necessity to land, to resources, to water, because we all need it in order to survive. And I, I also ask the uh, international um, uh, pressure to, uh, to come and uh, unite with us to ensure that our lands, our resources, and our waters are protected, because it will affect you as well. Mm -hmm. Whatever destruction is being made, in our lands will slowly make your way into your waters, into your in, into your lands, and we all we, and we all need to protect our world, our mother earth, in mm -hmm. every way we can to ensure that there is no more destruction uh, anywhere. And I and I call on to the international level to uh, 
the banner that's to join us in our move to try to uh, correct uh, the wrongs that, been, that, are, that is being done to us First Nations, but also to everybody in, in Canada. Thank you very much. Well, it's my 42 uh, days of uh, fasting, and um, it's hard, you know, but each day I'm here um, in my TV um, praying to the Creator. You know, just praying, and I have, I've, I feel, I, I feel more connected to Him, to the Creator, and and just realizing what's happening. You know, like to realize that the movement, the idol movement, and the, you know, the youth doing all the drumming and ceremonies, it's bringing everybody together, and uh, and it's. It's, it's a movement that I can't describe. I, I'm overwhelmed by it to myself. And um, just being, you know, being here, it, um, it gives me hope. You know, there's hope out there. And to tell the youth not, not, not to give up hope, but to keep going to believe there is a future and, and you know, to have faith in the Creator, because the Creator is, is, is powerful. You know, he has the power to change things, but we, we need to do our part. I mean, praying and doing the ceremonies, and really love each other and care for each other. Even pray for the prime minister and the government to come together with their leaders, and you know to real uh, to understand what's happening and why it's happening. And um, you know, in each day, I just go day by day, and I look forward for each day and to live with it and. Pray to greater and pray for the people, for, for for everybody, Canadian citizens, prime minister and leaders, the youth, young moms and elders, mothers, and you know mostly the children are they, are even unborn. You know just to feel that peace while you while you when I'm praying I feel peace. At the same time I'm suffering. As I pray, because that's part of praying, you suffer for your prayers to be answered. So that's how I look at it, you know, just pray every day. And I encourage everybody to do the same thing, just to pray for a better future and to come to as, as a nation to nation. And I, and I thank Raymond being here, you know, the balance, it really helps me. If I was alone, I think I would have been really, you know, down by now. And I, and I thank you for all the supporters who are also uh, fasting in, in their communities, even as one day or two days. That really helps me in, in, in encouragement words, even with word, uh, cards. It really helps me stand. Thank you. But this is my 40th first day. I'm always a deep behind. I never got up to her because I always <laughs> be one deep behind. But it's been a, a fair spiritual awakening for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I call this a spiritual awakening because, and why I say this because all the barriers have been knocked down. There is no color here, there's no prejudices here, there's no boundaries here. It's just people coming together, encouraging each other, sharing each other, supporting each other, doing what they can to make sure that everything is taken care of, everybody's needs are taken care of. And I congratulate she spends for her strength and courage and her commitment uh, to what she believes in. And I feed off her a lot. And we, we encourage each other, we encourage each other, we, we talk to her, we, we, we start along to, to ensure that er, the other is, 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 is in good spirits. And it's been a great moving experience for me to have come this far. and. It had really moved me and awakened me more that I never, I would have never thought, even though I prayed all my life, that one day I could see and experience that all races, no matter color, creed, shape, or size, where they came from, where they're going, can unite and without have, without no barriers of any kind. And we're living it. So there is possibility out there that we can coexist in society without basing anything mm -hmm. on color, creed, or race. And I have nothing against 
Harper. I never hated anybody because I'm a pipe carrier. My pipe tells me I have to love and I have to carry my pipe with honor and respect and in humility with the, with the teachings that come with it. So I got nothing against him. I got nothing against nobody. But it's the actions that yeah, he's yes. taking that's really disappointing to me. And I used to always disappointing because I don't base anything uh, negative per se. Even though the word disappointment is a little bit, but it, it's it it's 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 disheartening of the way he perceives and thinks that Canada is going to become a much greater and richer country. Not knowing that he's destroying it. So mm -hmm. thank you very much. Yeah, it's true. What Raymond said, like uh, I respect everybody, including the Prime Minister. You know, like it's, but he needs to understand not to take it personally and what we're doing. But they see us. But we're you know, voicing our concern as leaders and as First Nation people. And um, it's not about, you know, trying to discriminate him, but for him to hear us and respect us like we've been respecting him. Like we always did. In uh, so many years, we honored and respect the government of Canada. And we always will. But all we're asking is a meeting that, that's required, you know, to make peace with each other. Mm. Thank you. Thank you.